The term cone of silence became prevalent at the end of the last legislative session when behind closed door budget negotiations took place. Senator Sandy Pappas is co-author of a bill that would eliminate this. Senator, thanks for joining us today to talk about your proposal. I'm happy to be here. Well, let's begin with this cone of silence. Historically and traditionally, it's been prevalent in the past, so why is it, why is it a problem? Well, we have had open meeting law since 1972. It, this would just be a, um, I would say this is a pretty strict violation of, if not the letter of the open meeting law, certainly the spirit of the open, me open meeting law. And now critics would argue that many of those discussions that take place behind closed doors actually do take place prior to in different committees and conference committees, et cetera, and on the floors as well. So in their opinion, there is some transparency, although some new elements may be brought in in these budget negotiations. What's, this, what's your thought on that argument? Well, it, it, at least in that case, even if there are some private discussions, you have a public airing of the issues. I was pretty shocked that going into the special session, there were, there were no public meetings at all on anything that was going to be in the bill. There were no public discussions. In fact, the whole Capitol was locked down. The public couldn't even have access to the building. So I thought it was pretty outrageous. And you know, Senator spoke, t Ted Lilly, we just spoke to him prior to speaking with you, and he agrees with the concept of the bill, although he doesn't know the language, and it was introduced during special session. It's already been referred to the Rules Committee. So how optimistic are you that this bill can get a hearing and that you can get some bipartisan support on it? Well, it sounds like we might have some bipartisan support because the Republicans and the Democrats were both really locked out of most of the discussion. Just the leaders did the negotiation with the governor and the commissioners. And uh, that's not really part of the democratic process. I mean, there were, there were some surprises. There were not a lot of surprises because a lot of the bills had been vetted and had hearings during the regular legislative session. So what's the big secret? Why not have public hearings? Why not invite the public in to comment? Uh, the public will often spot mistakes, not just policy they disagree with, but actual mistakes that no one intended. And that's why it's important to have an open process. You speak about mistakes, and one such that just came up to my came into my head this moment was um, several years ago in some of those closed door meetings. One happened with the the tax portion of the bill, and it was Green Acres, and that mistake was incorrected a few years later. So, is that kind of the spirit of this? legislation then. Right. I saw something about in the, in the human services law, there was some unintended provision and the chair of the committee in the House said, well, I hope that they won't implement that until we can look into it, until we can figure it out. I noticed that in the higher ed bill, there was a provision on guaranteed tuition. I thought, where did that come from? I don't remember that passing the Senate or the House or being in the conference committee. So uh, maybe my memory's wrong, but I think if we had a public hearing, then we could ask questions about, you know, where did this provision come from and what's the rationale for it and why is it in there and what kind of impact is it going to have? So as former chair of the Higher Ed Committee, the Senate Higher Ed Committee, you've been involved in some of these private negotiations. So what's your vision and, and what do you think? Well, very minimally. I mean, if uh, maybe I was on call, I might get a phone call and be asked my opinion. But really, the minority was not included and most of the majority members were not in the room and included. What so, about in the past when you were part of the majority? Well, when we had special sessions, and we're talking about a special session right. here, we always had at least a hearing in front of the Finance Committee and the Tax Committee to go over the provisions if the individual committees didn't meet. We had public hearings. You know, if you, if you meet in the, in the House and the Senate as the Committee of the Whole, the, the public can't testify, the public can't comment. You know, some of these bills weren't even online. You know, we delayed a couple hours so that they were online, but the delay was from 9 o'clock at night until 1 o'clock in the morning. You know, who's paying attention at that time of night? I mean, I think that if we're going to have any legislation, we should have things about not having um, floor sessions at 3 in the morning. 